I will show you a fantastic setup that you can use in any of your projects to obtain a fake 3D effect. This is like the basics, so you have to know how this works. I will first show you a setup that does not require any constraint. It's gonna be just two bones, all right? So here we select first the parent bone which is gonna be the globe because we kind of want this to stay inside the globe so i'll select globe texture which is that bone that i hid before and then i'm gonna create a bone that will act uh, as the container in this sort of setup we're gonna have two bones one that is the container and one that is the control bone and it works like this i select my cube here and I create one first bone in the back to act as the container. Instead of red present base, I'll call this red present container. Okay. Then I'll create a second bone on the front, on the tip here. And I'll call this, instead of container, I'll call this control. Okay, so remember these two, container control, they are the founding pieces of the fake 3D effect, so the 2.5D effect. Let's select the art itself. Here is where we start creating meshes. If you are using Spine Essential, you are out of luck because for these uh, fake 3D effect, uh, having the ability to create meshes is necessary. First of all, we'll select the image of uh, the cube and we're gonna check mesh the mesh checkbox down here in the properties this changed okay the corners that we see here before they didn't have tiny dots on the corners now they have and that means that this is now a beautiful mesh now as you see there is kind of a line you can see almost a line okay that is cutting our image into two okay that's because triangles are what are, are actually deforming our mesh okay and so these lines that we're not seeing normally outside of edit mesh view are actually very important because they are what is actually distorting our mesh so the next big question is gonna be so how do we create a mesh that is gonna give us the result that we want which means the cube that looks in uh, 3d and uh, for that well we can use new to create the vertices in every corner i'm gonna do this quickly or we can also use instead of these the trace button which does pretty much the same okay and it does it a bit quicker so i will usually use the trace button to accomplish this I'll click OK. Now you'll see, however, that this is generally not enough. Because even if I move these vertices here, or if I exit edit mesh mode by clicking on the edit mesh button, and then I move a corner, it's still not working. And that is because the triangles that we have here are not flowing nicely to get the key to get good uh, deformation that looks 3D is to follow the lines the sh that convey a shape. So basically, we have to separate the planes, the top from the sides, using the vertices. And how do we do that? We select the Create button here. And we click, in this case, in the middle because there's a corner. And that will create lines here that allow me to distort this present a little bit better okay now if past me had created this a little bit uh with a little bit of additional padding then i would have had just one vertex here in the middle past me didn't think about this so now we have two of them but it's gonna be all right you should have something like this in front of you if you're following along with me we have our mesh, but the mesh is not doing anything interesting. Like oh, it's kind of it's kind of moving, right? But uh, and it kind of looks a bit more believable, but kind of also not because we need also the other parts of these to follow with it. So here's where the bones come in to help because instead of trying to select the vertices and adjust them manually, which means 
wasting a ton of time that could be spent better by just moving one bone and animating this, right? Uh, we are going to be using the property of binding the mesh to bones for the usage of weights. Okay, so here we are. And uh, to do that, I'm going to select the mesh, press bind, remember to be in setup mode and remember to not have distorted the, uh, the mesh, okay? It has to be ready, oh, like this would be bad, like this, fine, okay? So it has to be the same as when it wasn't a mesh. So no fooling around with this. Okay, so we have the mesh selected, we're gonna bind this, so it follows. The bone in the front, red present control, and the bone in the back, red present container. So control, container, the control controls the front, the container controls the back in this case. Or sometimes, in general, the container is the part that is not gonna move, and the control is the part that it, we're gonna move. Okay, for these, I like to generally do a little demonstration. So let's say that we have this cube here. How does the setup work in practice on uh, a physical cube? My hand here is like the container bone, and it works, it's like we stuck this hand here. And then this other hand here is my control. So the way it works is we're using one hand to maybe move the whole thing around, but this hand that I have in the front is the one that is actively doing the uh, rotation and the simulation of perspective. All right, so you've seen that I've made that sort of rotating movement with my hands. That rotating movement is also exceptionally good when we have to test our rig in animate mode. So we're in animate, I'm gonna use the standard animation that is automatically created here and I'm going to translate my control bone because we said that the container's job is to contain and move the whole cube around. The control bone is the one whose job is to move around to create the perspective effect. So I am going to select this control bone and I'm going to move it first in one uh, but remember to disable compensation. Okay, first in one direction, and you see it kind of liquefies, that's okay. Um, but if you feel like this confuses you, we're gonna zero out the movement here, so it's not following with the wrong uh, automatic weights, and we do so by selecting the entirety, okay, of the vertices that we have here. First we select the weights tool, then we do a box selection, selecting all of the vertices, and then we select uh, in the weights panel, which if you don't have, you can open from views, uh, weights, and then we select the container bone and raise the influence from mode direct, okay, to 100%. This way, the cube is not gonna move, even though I moved the control bone, because we moved all of the influence of these vertices to that bone. So I select this bone here and I was saying that I'm gonna move it completely in one direction. Then I go on frame 40, which I can just click on like this on the dope sheet. If you don't see the dope sheet view, you should have it stacked, okay? Or you can open it from the views dope sheet, okay? In case you're following along. Then let's move this. Okay, I want this to do a loop. So I click on 40 and click on the key next to translation to keep that same position again so that it's keeping it. Then I'm gonna move it in the opposite direction like this. So now it's doing this movement. Then on frame 10 I move it up. On frame 30 I move it down like this. The final result is gonna look more like a diamond than a circular motion but if you wanted to, you could also do a circular motion. Okay, this is to test some extreme poses, so the range of motion that we want to have. If I were to smash this cube into a wall, there would be like one corner that would hit before the others, okay? Then this is the other wall. This is how you have to imagine the control 
and the container bones as seen from the top. Here is where this part first touches the wall first, so if we smash into that. And this is the part that is the most in the back. So based on the info, we can select this corner here and apply 100% because it's touching that wall. Now you see that these are kind of distorting this badly, but that is because we have to once again imagine our cube. If this is one extreme and this is the other extreme, in the middle, okay, these two, what are they going to be? If this is 100% and this is 100%, because they are at half of the distance, they're not going to be 100%, but they're likely going to be 50%. So by this logic, we select these parts here and we assign 50% of the weights. And already you can see that it finally looks like a cube, like it's in perspective. Let's temporarily hide also here this ribbon that I have on top and then we're gonna attach it, which is the advanced bit of this setup, but for now it's not serving as well. Okay. Then, of course, that is an approximation, but it's very important to get very quickly to a point where your weights are going to be 80% correct. So the next step is going to be to test this into extreme poses. So if I push it up to the maximum, oh, it's actually already good. So I think that 50 is correct in this case. Let's push it down. It's actually not bad. So if I wanted to, I could also change a little bit the weights to get the perspective so that this side is not touching and I could have this be slightly less than that and therefore also change this accordingly, okay? Uh, and so we'd get this, instead of being straight, I change the perspective. It's like the cube is slightly tilted in front if I do this. Now, I don't actually feel the need to do that. I liked it as it was. So I can also leave it as it is, like this. Okay, these are my extremes. This is gonna work. If I'm in much of a rush, this is perfectly fine, it's working. I tested it in some extremes and it kind of works, so I'm happy. Okay, I see that here maybe the cube starts distorting too much, so maybe I just push it a little bit less and I call it a day. And that's how you can rig the first cube. Now the difficult part is to attach Okay, the red present decoration here, so it follows the cube. So how do we do that? First, we reactivate it and parent it to the container bone. Then we're gonna turn this into a mesh as well. Okay, then we can go the... Uh, what are we gonna do? Since it's round, I think I'm just gonna keep it flat. I don't care. And I'm just gonna bind it as it is. I just checked mesh. Okay, and bind it here and here to the front, so to the control and the container bone. Then I'm gonna go back to animate mode. Oh, see, now it received 100% of the uh, control bone, so it looks like it's very in the front. Oh, this is gonna be great to explain how the weights work. When something is 100% following the control bone, it's gonna be the most in the front. When it's 100% on the container, it's 100% in the back, so it's not moving. Now, if I get it to be any any uh, amount in between, I'm gonna get it to be a little bit in front and in the back. And I can also get some interesting results, like instead, if I only select the back part and I get it to be like this, now I have a version of the star that is flat, okay? That's basically it. That's all you need to know to be able to get your own perspective effects. So it looks like this, but it still looks detached. So I think I'm gonna have to create a mesh that is a bit more complex than this, which I didn't plan for, but let's see what happens. Absolutely, I was hoping to go with the laziest version of these, but well, you are going to <laughs> encounter round stuff at some point, so it, we might as well see how to deal with them. I find that there is always two approaches in that case, which consist in either ignoring they exist or creating something like this. Okay, right now I remove the extra vertices to show you again the effect of something that is gonna be conical. Okay, these weights are terrible, so I'm gonna flat it out, get it to be at the right distance. 
Okay, I generally want it to touch one part one part to touch the right place, which is this corner here. And then I'll get the rest to be pushed a little bit in the back in the next part, which is more or less like this. Okay, so when in doubt, I usually do it like this. Then I'll select the next part, which is likely gonna be this, and push it to be more in the back. Now it's starting to look believable. Okay, I want to push this so it's more attached to the package like this. Okay, then I'll select this and I'll get it either to be like this, <laughs> but it kind of makes uh, the front part a tad too flat, it needs to pop out. Okay, so let's see it from afar. It kind of looks okay, I feel like the part in the front stretches a bit too much. It should lay flat on this, but instead it's going down, which means that I assigned the wrong weight. Okay, so this was uh, the first approach to the cube. I showed you something simple and something a bit more advanced. Now, and you've seen how to place this cursed object on top. Now let's repeat this game on the other cube down here, so we get some other learning experience. Okay, for the second setup, this second setup I am sure you have seen in many videos because it's one of the most beloved ones to do stuff. Uh, it involves the creation of two bones uh, this time, and uh, I'm going to uh, create a bone that acts as the control in front, and one that moves in reverse for the back part. Fun fact, I used this setup for the first time during a job uh, that we did together many, many years ago. It was before I started working for Spine. Uh, and then I started sharing how this project worked uh, during the streams, but this is a very old setup. Uh, it's even older than this other one that I came up with afterwards. And I'm gonna select globe texture, and I'm gonna create the bones for this setup. So we said we need, again, two bones, but this time you'll see that the setup is completely different. And it's gonna be useful because, um, well, before, when we had this cube, it could be moved, okay? Uh, basically, we had something that could be attached to a side to something else, because that's what it does. Thanks to this setup, it's like we move, okay? It's like I can put my hand inside the cube and I can now rotate it like this. Now, to be fair, it's actually like we'll be translating things in reverse. Um, and so it's going to be more like shearing, but still it's going to be useful to uh, creating a believable effect of something rotating on itself, which is what we're going to be doing on this cube. We first select the create tool, we are in setup mode, we select the pattern bone, which is in this case is the globe texture, and I'm going to be holding control to select the art at first, and I'll create the control bone first uh, this time. I'll call this control, perfect, and then I'm gonna be creating another bone in the back that I'm actually gonna parent again to globe holder, so it's gonna be there in the VOD, which is, so to me, it's the reason why it would be nice to have another bone that can hold the entirety of the, um, the present, so you can move the present around, and I'm gonna add it at the end, but for this specific setup you just need two bones. So this is gonna be the inverse bone, inverse, there we go, and um, the way this works is, this bone in the front is gonna be the one that we're gonna be able to move pretty much like with this one, okay? Let's change icons. Whereas this was the holder, the container. This one instead is a bone that we're never gonna want to move directly. So I'm gonna change this to something like do not touch me, okay? And this is like, yes, touch me, yes, move me around. Okay, so we remember. Okay, so this is the inverse and this is the control. Now. To get this setup to work, we select the inverse bone, then choose new, transform constraint, select the front, and we call this blue present control, it's fine, because it's a generic name. Then, very important, we press match, so that the bone does not start moving as soon as I start changing the mix. So, 
set match and then I set the translation to minus a hundred and minus a hundred. Okay. Now, when I move this bone, if I were to move it, it would do this, getting the other bone to move in reverse. I prefer not to do this in setup, really, though. Okay, then we basically repeat the same things that we did with the red, um, with the red present here. So I'll do this a bit quicker this time. So, to get it not to move, because one bone is doing the reverse of what the other bone is doing, all I have to do is to set the, the influence of the weights to 50%. This way, when I move the bone, it's not going to move itself. I have a clean slate this way. Alright, since the movement that I want is basically the same as this, I'm just going to copy the keys from this bone and paste them on this bone. Okay, so they are moving exactly the same way and we can compare them. Okay, so for this second one, we change the stakes a little bit. Now, let's say that instead of having it move like completely in the front like this, we have it tilted as we're seeing it here. So the plane is like this and not like this. Then I'm going to assign 100% to the vertex that is the closest to us. But this time, so this is the front, this is the back, we're not seeing this part. So there is no 100% for the back, okay? Based on this, we're gonna go back here and we're gonna instead consider at what distance these parts are. Now, they are at roughly one third and two thirds is the distance of these. So back here, I'm gonna assign for these ones, sixty-six percent because that's one third, and already you can see that it starts looking more three D ish. And then the next corner, I'm gonna assign sixty-six or thirty-three, thirty-three of the other. So if this is inverse, inverse, I want it to have sixty-six percent, and the result is gonna look like this. Now this is an approximation, so maybe it's not as strong. I can regulate this, okay? But more or less, if we're going to be around those numbers, we're gonna get a good result. I think I'm gonna try and change the weights to get an optimal version of these. But it can, I can change the angle at which this is rotating depending on the weights that I start assigning here. Uh, the only question is for the down part here if I want to leave it that way or if I want it to be changed to something else. It looks believable enough, so it's fine as it is. Alright, so we've seen two methods. One that does not use a constraint and gets the present to be attached to a side, so the pivot, the rotation point, the place where it is attached is in the back, and one where the rotation point, we could say, is more in the middle of this present instead, and so um, it uses instead these two bones, uh, one rotating the opposite side of the other. Mesh, edit mesh. Let's see, tracing, can tracing save me? No, I hate the tracing results. So I'll create just a new version. I'll bind this to the front and to the back. And once again, I'll get it to be attached. How do I get it to be attached? I like to do it this way. First, I attach it to the front by using the slider until it looks attached. I think this is it. I will stop at an extreme and get it to be on the top. That usually gets it at the right point. So see, there, there are tricks to get this. Okay, at the middle line here, that's where I can know if I attached it right or wrong. I want to change maybe just two to be more in the front. 
All right, so that's gonna be okay for this tiny part that is gonna look on screen like this, yeah. Let's see how we could apply this concept instead to something a bit more convoluted, like something that has uh, pieces, a top part a to that is round, and these. Okay, let's see, because I have no idea either. We're gonna do something that makes sense to me and see if that works, and if not, we're gonna try some other stuff. For sure, I'm gonna attempt for this one to turn this into a mesh and call it a day, like this. Well, I'm gonna have one bone act as the container. So uh, it's gonna be like this one, but in reverse. First I'll do it on this small gift, and then I'll show you on the bigger thing. And I'm gonna parent it here, okay. And uh, that's my container. So I'm placing the container in the front this time, okay? container okay and i'm gonna be placing that other control in the back this time it's gonna be basically identical it's just that the weights are gonna be different compared to the other version so if i bind these two then i copy and paste the animation that i had for this bone here on this other bone my control i'll also change the icon so you are not gonna be confused the weights are gonna be pretty much the same okay they're already basically set i'm just gonna set these to 50. okay look at it now let's compare them this is attached in the back this is attached in the front what changed only that we place the control in the back and assign 100% to it. So it's basically the reverse of the other. Is this more correct than this? Depends on what you need it to, to be doing. Okay, it's exactly the same image in all these cases. It has different weights. It has different controls. So as we are learning, it depends on what effect you want to achieve. Then uh, let's actually see what we could be doing on this because it's a more complex shape can i trace this i always love to attempt the tracing maybe i roll with it i don't know it feels uh, like um, i don't know Whatever, I'm gonna keep them, but the less vertices you have, the, the simpler it's gonna be uh, when you have to try to do this. So I recommend starting with less vertices if possible. I'll bind these to the control and the bone that is not visible, the globe texture. And then I also have these to bind to those same bones. So these and the globe texture. I'm gonna select the control that I have here. <laughs> Let's see what happens if I just paste the same animation here. Or what is the part that is most in the front? I guess that's gonna be uh, this part here. This whole line even. I could have this whole line just not move. And so I assign 100% of globe to that because I want it anchored there. We could work in lines like this and then this part is supposed to like follow but at a slower pace and this is also gonna be following but at a slower pace like this and as you see it kind of created a sort of perspective it's kind of like the cube but also not okay let's see if this sells it now i'm gonna be tuning this until i get a result that i like also notice how i'm selecting things why am i selecting them in a line like this because it's based on the distance from the object and let's see maybe i can get these two to have different weights to get a sense of depth that is stronger on the sides so i could do that so this makes it more in the front this pushes this more in the back Okay, and then I'm gonna fix a little bit the affect here. So the tricky part is that the uh, part that is actually not supposed to move starts from here, which means that I need to add a couple of vertices on each side here to get the effect right, because otherwise it, de it detaches. So I'm gonna select this again and assign 100%. Suddenly it just works. 
Okay, so it's not like I have a ton of range, but for something that does not have other stuff, I mean, it's pretty good, right? I could push it this far. Yeah, so, um, so sometimes what I like to do is to push it at a ridiculous angle like this one, which is totally, I don't think I'm gonna push it that far ever. But it helps me because this way I can tell if I set the right weights or not. And we saw how to get some 2.5D effects on this now. I mean, I hope. You enjoyed this session. We have seen some of the basics of 2.5D uh, together. I hope you'll get to use these and apply them to your projects. Next time, we're gonna attempt something more difficult. So if in between these two sessions, uh, you try this out, so you're ready to do another step and do something additional, that would be lovely. I will see you again next week. Thank you and bye-bye.